everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back talking about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're talking about the clock spring. This particular one came from a B6 Passat, but what we're going to talk about today is actually universal on all Volkswagen clock springs. Some are a little bit more sophisticated than others. This is a pretty basic one, and uh, we kind of go up from here. Before we get rolling into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is, of course, DeutschAutoParts.com. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. They have great prices, incredible service, and they actually do a ton of really awesome DIY videos. If you watch a couple of them, you might just recognize somebody. Anyway, check them out, DeutschAutoParts.com. They've been a huge supporter of the show, and I really appreciate all they've done, all they do for the Volkswagen community and our community. So. Shout out to them, check them out, deutscheautoparts.com. I'll be sure to put links to their website and their DIYs in the show notes for you guys. So, what does a clock spring do? The clock spring is the electrical connection between all the things in your steering wheel to the body of the vehicle. So every time you turn your steering wheel left or right, you have to maintain electrical connection for things like the airbag, the steering wheel controls, and the horn. If you were to happen to turn your wheel and get in an accident, you still want the airbag to deploy. If a part like a clock spring didn't exist, you might not have that electrical connection if, say, your steering wheel was turned 90 degrees. This is a really important safety component of the vehicle, so that no matter at what position your steering wheel is turned, you're always going to maintain electrical connection. How it works is pretty simple. Inside of this unit here is a ribbon cable, and as you rotate and turn your steering wheel left or right, it maintains that connection and basically it just winds or unwinds depending on which direction that you turn it. So the big question is, is how does it fail? Well, it can fail in a number of different ways. Most of the time what I've seen is the ribbon cable inside actually gets crimped and pinched and it'll sort of disturb the electrical connection and that's enough to cause a failure. You can also have a loose connection in the connector housing at this point or down here at the bottom at this point. Again, there are different clock spring setups, so the more sophisticated ones with the steering electrics module built in have more connectors than just the two on this one. We could also be looking at a failure of the G85, which is the steering angle sensor, so your vehicle knows exactly what position your steering wheel is turned to. And again, on the ones that are a little bit more sophisticated, there could be an internal failure of the module inside of the clock spring unit. So how do you know you have a bad clock spring? Well, the easy ones are your airbag light is on and your horn doesn't work and your steering wheel buttons don't work. Now I've seen those things happen independently and not be a clock spring, but for the most part when you have all three of those, it's generally this guy right here. You could also have any one of those things and it also be the clock spring. And you could even be dealing with something like an EPC light, a solo airbag light, or just your horn's not working. It all really depends on what portion inside of this little box failed. So how do we diagnose it? Well, the best way to diagnose this as a failed part is to have a scan tool available. So you can check and see what fault is stored in your airbag, let's say. You would get a fault for the main driver's airbag, either igniter one, igniter two, or both. Or if it does just have one igniter, you would get a fault for that. If it's just the horn not working, from what I've found the best thing to do is output test the horn and make it beep. Or if your alarm horn and your vehicle horn are the same horn, you can lock your car, beep, beep, and see if the horn honks. That's not applicable on all cars, so you don't want to really rest every bit of diagnosis on that, but it's just another quick thing to check. We can also hop in, if we have a scan tool, and check value blocks and see what position the steering wheel is being seen at. So if we're turning the wheel back and forth, and we're not seeing the values change in the scan tool, we know we probably got an issue with the clock spring or something else, but again, this is a moving part. So whenever you're diagnosing a car, just a, like a quick side note, if there's a moving part involved, that's the best place to start because the most amount of stress is gonna be in a moving part. You could also ohm out the clock spring itself, where you would take an ohm meter and put it on one pin here and the corresponding pin here. I will tell you that wiring diagrams for these are a lot of times pretty weak and you may not get the best information from it. You also wanna make sure if you do that, you do not have it plugged in. Because we're dealing with airbag systems, we really don't wanna use an ohm meter to test anything in the airbag system. Again, if we have a scan tool, we can hop into the airbag module 
and look at what reading we're getting for the driver's airbag. You'll get something like correct or too large depending on how it's failed. And a really good tip is to watch the value block while you're turning the wheel back and forth, moving the clock spring, and you may see the value change or drop out. Is this a DIY part? Well, honestly, it really depends. If it's this simple one right here, then yeah, it's not a terrible DIY. The airbag does need to be removed as well as the steering wheel, so you'll need to take all the safety precautions that you can when dealing with an airbag system, as well as you wanna make sure you get the steering wheel back on straight. Uh, nothing worse than finishing a job and have your steering wheel tilted this way, so. Um, Proper marking, proper safety precautions are a must when dealing with any type of airbag system. There are also, like I mentioned before, some of these clock springs have the steering wheel electrics module built into them. And if that's the case, you gotta have a scan tool because not only do you have to code this basically module, you also have to set all the basic settings for it, which can be tricky even with the factory scan tool. So that's something you definitely need to be aware of. This is also a very VIN specific part so make sure if you're buying this part, you have your VIN available to make sure that you get the exact part for your vehicle. Before I wrap up, I think I gotta show you guys what happens when clock spring installation goes wrong. And here's what your ribbon cable looks like. And if you do a bad job installing it or removing it, this is what you end up with. You can repair these, but it's a super pain in the butt and you'll probably wind up with an airbag or some sort of issue with the clock spring after you're done. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments section below. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. Hey, don't forget to subscribe on the YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, humblemechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. Don't forget to check out deutschautoparts.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.